I'm happy to call the meeting to order at 703 for Wakefield. And 703 for Melrose. Okay. Has everybody, I know that we got our meeting, our minutes um, a little bit ago. I can share them if you feel like it, but if you've all been able to review them on the Wakefield side, were there any issues? No, I can, no one change. Um, uh, in the second paragraph, it said that I felt that we should wait until May 4th when the governor's order is over. That was May 4th when our um, advisory ends. All right. Not the governor's order. Okay. And then I just saw a little typo. Mayor yeah. just had the apostrophe in the wrong place. Yeah. Where? Where? Uh, well, the last sentence on the first page. Last sentence. Last sentence, first page. What? Right. Just below, just below the change for me. Well, aren't we taking the governor's order phrase out and putting it? Yes. The yeah, but that's not what Laurel's talking about. Laurel's talking about the typo. That's up Would top. It Mute. Nope. That's not what I want. Oh, there's a typo. There's a typo in Maureen's name. No, and the May is off. May is. Well, tell me what paragraph. Oh, okay. Mayor, see it. I got it. Excellent. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> as it turns out, my tech ability to share is not as good as I thought it was. Well, so much for spell check. <sighs> okay, so um, Wakefield, are you prepared to make a motion to accept the meeting for Wakefield? Anybody? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes for the meeting from the 23rd. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, yes, hold on. roll call. Yep, roll call. Candace? Uh, yes. Elaine? Yes. Laurel? Yes. Frank, you want to make a motion? Frank's muted. He, he muted himself, but okay. What? Uh, these were sentences I was driving in, so I just looked at them now. Um, the only thing I see that jumps out at me is that Wednesday, April 29th is the next meeting, not 30th. Oh, today is the 29th. Yep. Otherwise, it looks okay. okay. Got it. You want to make a motion to approve? Yes, motion to approve the um, minutes as amended. Seconded. All in uh, favor? Aye. Oh, sorry. Yes. Maureen, you need to do a roll call. Um, all in favor, Frank, yes. Yes. Maureen, yes. And then we don't have it on the agenda, but um, we have had some public postings that I believe in the new online and Zoom format, we're supposed to read out loud to our boards. Um, so if you guys mind if I just read these real quick to you? These are just to think about, we don't have to respond to them. I assume that in the context of the meeting, we may actually be responding to them because they're about, all about um, the current situation. These are, um, these are both Wakefield comments. Yes. So one is from... Whoever is rustling paper, can you mute yourself? Okay, can you just someone nod? Because I just muted you all. You can hear me? Okay. All right. So this is um, from Frank Dimiani. Um, I can forward it to Cindy so she can actually see it for spelling. Um, messages, I am wondering why Wakefield is so behind other towns and cities that require face masks be worn by everyone outside the home. 
I live across from Lake Quinnipiac, and more than 50% of the people who walk the lake do not keep a safe distance and do not wear face masks. Please make it a mandate in Wakefield and fine people for not following the mandate. Also, many of the landscapers along Main Street are excellent about social distancing, but there are some, including next door to me, who don't wear masks, nor do they keep the social distancing. I would like to know what you and the town of Wakefield are going to do about all of this. Sincerely, Fran Dimiani. So that was one. The other um, was, uh-oh, I don't have the second page. I may have to pull it and, and read it to you later, but it's it's essentially the same thing. This is from Bronwyn Della Volp um, from 8 Cyrus Street. She says, many, many sincere thanks for your hard work during this pandemic. With so much confusion con concerning the order to wear face coverings, could you please review this order and when it applies and when it doesn't apply? She also went on to ask us why we waited on the order when other communities had gone earlier. Um, and then one more that was addressed to administrate, town administrator Steve Mayo. Um, along the same lines, Mr. Mayo, first of all, I want to thank you for having this forum to reach you. I lived in Wakefield for years and walked the lake every morning with my dad. He, like so many others, had to walk as he was a diabetic. Walking helped keep his weight and insulin in check. Now with all the parking blocked and worse than that, especially for senior citizens, all the toilets have been removed. But the thing that really bothers me is that 90% of the people don't wear a mask and wondering what we might want to do about it. Um, so. Those were the uh, those were the concerns. I'm unmuting now. So just you know keep those in mind um, as we proceed. Anything on the Melrose side of you? Do you have anything from public? Um, just I think I have two of those three that you read. Um, I'll I'll circle back with you tomorrow to make sure I have all three of them so they can be okay. part of the minutes. Yep. Um, no, just no. No, no written, um, you know. Oh no, actually that's true, not true. One person wrote the mayor saying, how dare we, and she will no longer do business in Melrose. So. Yep. <laughs> hey. yeah, both extremes, huh? Yeah. I'm not that far behind anyone else in doing this. Who, who else did it before us? So um, I think there's two separate issues people are talking about. The, um, the indoor mask order, um, a number of communities have done in, well, obviously the three that I sent you, um, Malden has, there's a number of communities have done that. The only communities who have required um, a face covering outdoors, as far as I know, is Somerville and now Cambridge. And Lawrence. Oh, and Lawrence. No, oh, that was on the news today. Okay, missed that. I haven't, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen any news what, yet. you're not watching TV? No. And their fines were a lot steeper than ours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I did throw out one idea to Steve. There are some um, signage things available that can, we, that, uh, what do they call them? I don't know, floor signs that we could purchase and, uh, and affix to the sidewalks. I mean, obviously not everywhere, but you know, we could put some out and attach them to the sidewalk going around the lake, but it's, I mean, it's ultimately really unenforceable unless, unless we didn't allow people at all to be outside walking, you know, but besides that, it's, you know, there's only so much we can do. Yeah. Um, there Just like common sense. I'm, I'm saying to patients of mine all the time, yes, get outside, go exercise, yeah. get fresh air. Just go do it where there aren't a ton of people doing the yeah. same thing, having the same idea. Yeah. You know, Mayor Marty Walsh, I just heard him on the radio on the way here saying, you know, have, him, Scott, have something with you, wear it if you're going to be near someone else. If there's no one near you and you're running or, or biking, then yeah, you know, do whatever is comfortable. But, you know, there is a little element of common sense that's okay to use here, you know? 
<laughs> and I see these crowds of people walking around the lake and I'm like, why are you all doing the same thing in the same place? Go somewhere else. Yeah, we do have, you know, we have Breakheart, we have the Fells. There's, there's a lot of places to go walking. Just your neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Um, the golf courses, they're closed. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we kind of have squeezed people. It's a little, a little counterintuitive sometimes, but clearly we still have an issue. So, um, um, I want, so along the whole face covering order, I wanted to update a couple of things that I had, even though I didn't send you the health director's report till today, I actually wrote it on Tuesday. Um, so I just wanted to update that a little bit. So just based on comments and questions that I've been getting, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things for you to think about. You may want to revise some of the wording. You don't have to. I'm not suggesting you do it tonight, but I, I just want to tell you some of the stuff that's come up. Um, one person brought up the issue that some people really shouldn't be wearing a mask because of respiratory issues mm -hmm. um, or um, she was talking about a relative who had claustrophobia and panic attacks and just can't and somebody else brought up um, somebody with developmental disabilities that may not really understand yeah. and I think it's probably worth including that language in there um, and then the other thing that has come up is, well, there's two things that have come up. One is uh, offices, working in an office. So I know the discussion that we had last week was really about um, businesses and, you know, like really thinking about going into a grocery store or a pharmacy, but we didn't talk about office buildings that might actually still be working in their offices. And um, Edgewood asked me about that because they have full office buildings and wanted to know, did their, did their employees have to wear a mask you know, while they were working inside? And I said, yeah, you know, the way it's written is yes. But I wanted to just bring that up. Do you feel like if they have six feet between them, do they not need to wear a mask or should they still be wearing a mask? I will tell you in, in Wakefield Town Hall, everybody wears a mask if they're in the building. Including when they get to their office? Yep. In the back corner? Mm. Well, I'm not telling. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Uh, I was looking at language from Reading and I meant to pull it. Hmm. Any? The other thing, Ruth, I think that we were, um, we also had mentioned was that we did pull that, the gasoline outdoor. Oh, the gasoline service. part. Yeah. What have you heard about that? Well, we had one person very upset about it until I said it was meant for the attendance at full service. Um, I happened to get my gas at a full service in Wakefield. And I pulled up and it was a kid, wasn't wearing a mask. I didn't identify myself. I just offered him a mask as just a nice person. Yeah. And he thanked me, but he didn't wear the mask. And when I drove by the next day, he still wasn't wearing a mask. But do, do I really care? Mm. So, and when I talked to Salem, he didn't really have a good reason for putting it in. He said more, well, you know, if they're at a uh, Cumberland Farms type place and they're pumping gas and then going inside, but um, we've kind of already addressed the going inside part. I, I don't, I don't have strong feelings either way about those. 
um, I do think we should be putting in language for uh, exceptions for medical issues and disabilities. The other two, you know, um, bringing it up for you to think about. If I can do it, you guys want me to throw the regulation back up on the screen so we're all looking at the same thing? If I can do it. I'll do it. There it is. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice job. <laughs> it's, isn't that cool? Now I'm going to take myself off of there so I can see it. So this is this is um, how our communication people, you know, got rid of the whereas when we posted it. So this is sort of the, the crux of the order is here. Um, entering into, in, you know. Yeah, open I mean, I, I think that if there's a person pumping your gas or you're doing self-serve gas and chances are there's somebody who very well could be within six feet or even if they're not, you know, you should still be wearing a, a mask. You're in a public place, reasonably close to other people. Okay, that's fine. Is this clear? Pumping gasoline or otherwise using outdoor self-service? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, a self-service facility could be an ATM, yeah. anything where, you know, you're going to be around other people. Yep. You're wearing a mask. I mean, it's... Yep. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't fully appreciating the strength of the or, so that language is fine. Okay, it's fine. Um, and then engaging in activity within a confined or enclosed facility. So that answers the Edgewater question there. Yeah, right. workers are present. Yeah. No, I, it wasn't a question as to whether it was in the order or not. The question was. Right. I was just wondering if it needed to be addressed. And I'm just thinking that. It, no, it, <laughs> in the order. The question is, did you mean to include that in the order? We okay. haven't talked about the office environment. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go in and, and bust them and give them fines because they're not wearing masks, right? In a place like that. Um, they're they're kind of taking their chances, basically, right? No, they, they're wearing the mask. She just wanted clarification. Good. She wasn't challenging it. She just wanted clarification. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so do you want me to put in some revised language for next week's meeting about exceptions if you have a medical issue or a cognitive disability? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Something I've heard of one. Yeah. Order, order does not apply to at the bottom. At the bottom, there's a exception. Order order does not apply to. Um, yeah, there we go. Can we just add to that? Um, people who have um, cognitive cognitive or cognitive respiratory or. Well, let's just uh, say a medical, a medical medical condition where wearing a, wearing a mask right. is not contraindicated. Yeah. That covers it. You're right, Frank. Yep. Yeah. You. Do you think by adding that in, it's going to be a reason for people to just say, "Oh, well, guess what? That's me. Yeah. I'm not going to." That's the danger. There's always people who are going to do that, but, yeah. but so if, people who if, legitimately if, have that issue, I had a woman call who was. Um, extremely angry would be the polite way. Hmm. And um, she doesn't want to be turned away at the door of the grocery store. Oh. And that's legit. That's a legit yeah. concern. Still awkward. Mm. Somebody wants to claim a cognitive disability. <laughs> She have a medical disability that or a problem where she couldn't wear one or she just was refusing to like um claustrophobic and can't put something over her face well I, I think you know maybe the first time you give them a pass but i don't even know about that give them a warning and then say you're going to get a fine if you do this again 
unless you have a doctor's note with you or something oh, like that. Oh, we are not going not down the there, doctor's yeah. note part. Nope. Well, how else? I mean, otherwise anyone can say, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I think you take that risk. You know, anybody can say that their dog is a service dog too, because you don't need to prove that they're a service dog. You have to take them for their word. I mean, yeah. it's just some things you just have to take people for their word. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of invisible disabilities. I know it's almost like, you know, and if we ever put in language, it said as much as you are able, you know, that takes it back to an advisory. Um, I'm good with us trying the wording. My only other thought too was, you know, I went into a grocery store the other day and actually I was so steamed up between my mask and my glasses that I didn't actually see this huge placard that said, you know, face coverings. I was like, oh, you have it out? And I saw several couples in the store who were not masked and I did, and one of them actually had, they both had something on their neck that they could easily pop up. So I just politely said, hey, just so you know, this is now an order in Wakefield. Um, and I'm wondering if the signage that people have should have a per, you know, order per health department. Nice segue, Laurel. Um, oh, yeah. Jeff actually just came up with a really nice sign today um, that I just got this afternoon. Uh, Jen, do you want to talk about it? She's still here? She is. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Look at her! Woo! So, um, well, we would know that you would be better than us. Yeah. Um, well, at the town council meeting, it was suggested that perhaps I make a sign um, that just mentions that it was per the, you know, board of health's order. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just what I came up with really quickly. Totally open to your feedback. Um, you know, they wouldn't have to use it, and um, but if it was a resource the Chamber of Commerce said they would be happy to distribute it if we're interested. Yeah, and I told Jen, we have a distribution list for all of our food establishments, and I loved it. And I said, uh, you know, we can send it out tomorrow to all of our food establishments. Again, not as you must use it, it's a resource for you. Mm -hmm. And then well, I wonder if she would do it for Melrose. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing on. Oh, it's Melrose. Yeah, I can. I can write. Melrose. All you have to do is it's in Adobe, so I can't. I can't edit it. Yeah, I can. I can change that to Melrose. Thank if you. you want to steal it. Would it make it more official looking if we wrote the date of the order? On you know, until further note. I, I don't know. I just. Mm. I don't know. If I don't want to. I don't want to. With no date. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. it's less confusing. Yeah. I love it. I love it too. Uh, it's very nice. I think it's awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll make the Melrose version then. Yeah, thank you. And then we'll um, we'll send it out to all the food establishments tomorrow from both communities. And what about the pharmacies too? Um, they all have food. They all sell food. They all have food permits. Okay. Good. <laughs> they sell more food now than pharmacy. Ruth, have you been getting any um, any compl um, compliance issues that are sort of really out there rather than just ignorant? Or just, you know, um, we have, I haven't had any issues so far in Melrose. Um, we have three businesses that are, um, <laughs> I'm working with um, that are not particularly cooperative on the mask part. Or uh -huh. face covering, as you say. I'm sorry, face covering. <laughs> That's your thing. Just You're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Cumberland Farms Corporate um, has an issue with them telling people that they have to wear a mask. And I, I had a, the, the, the local manager is wonderful. He's great to work with. He of course has to, um, he has to do what his corporate tells him. So he put me in touch with the district manager. I um, corresponded through email with the district manager. I included 
the language that shows partway down that they mu they are required oh. to not allow but if you want to pull that back up again but somewhere in there it says mm -hmm. that the the store is required to not allow somebody oh good thank you um keep going keep going right here yeah this person or, yeah um no no not there no no hold on let me press it. if you want the actual order click at the bottom where it says details of the order here uh, that was more okay. like a summary yeah okay i'm clicking on because that's what i need so if you, Jen, you have to commit last, every one of our meetings. Um, yeah, really. So hold on. Hold on. Who's, who has control of the scrolling? I do. Every okay. business and workplace subject. See where it's underlined and required? Yep. That was actually two words that I put in that wasn't in the other towns. <laughs> yep. um, turns out it was a good thing I did. Yeah, because theirs just say they're authorized to expel. Yeah, but required. And we put in, no, you must expel them from the facility. So um, he said he would pass it on to his legal department. I passed it on to MAHB's lawyer because obviously this is not going to be a Wakefield issue. It's going to be, you know, everywhere that has a Cumberland Farms and has such an order. So we're working on that one. Um, the night manager of Walgreens seems to have an issue with this. Really? Not the regular manager, but the night manager. I talked to him yesterday afternoon. And then I went in as a customer last night. And yep, there was a person walking around without a mask. <clears throat> so I identified myself and asked her why she wasn't wearing a mask. And she said, oh, it's right here in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> put it on, okay. yeah. So maybe you should put that on. Yeah. Wearing it in the wrong place. <laughs> it doesn't work there, yeah. Yeah, so, I, so she did. And then I went over to talk to the night manager, who I had spoken to earlier that afternoon. <clears throat> He's like, oh yeah, you know, I was about to go over and talk to her. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, so I'll go in and check again um, as a customer, but in the evening when he's working. And then <clears throat> the latest one is Sunny Noto's that we got a complaint about this afternoon. So I went over before the meeting and the girl at the, the girl, the woman who was you know, passing out the orders in the front had a, had a mask on, but the two cooks in the back had masks around their necks. So I asked to speak to the manager, and the manager came out from the <coughs> part with no mask, and I introduced myself, and he said, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> and, um, you know, I said, what's going on? And I, I told him about the complaint, and he said, well, it's, it's really hot to be behind, you know, the line wearing a mask. And I said, yeah, I understand that. Um, but <laughs> I said, we've had other restaurants that have had to close because one of the cooks tests positive and because all the cooks is usually like two or three. And they work so closely together in the back that they're all considered close contacts, which means all their cooks have to quarantine and they have to close because they have no cooks. So I said, that's the reason why they need to wear masks. And I understand it's uncomfortable. However, you know, he can be uncomfortable and open or be very comfortable at home and closed. And he said, well, Maybe I'll just close. I said, well, that's certainly your decision. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll have to make that decision. And I said, yeah, you, you, you do have to make that decision. So I'll check back with him tomorrow. So those are the 
those are the only compliance issues. I guess the only, it's kind of a lot for Wakefield and so far we're okay in Melrose. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and though, you know, all of our colleagues have told us to avoid it, I couldn't help but look at the, take the pulse of the community Facebook page. And there was a lot of, um, you know, what's happened to this country and all kind of sort of, you know, you're infringing upon our rights. But there was also a fair number of, um, you know, supportive comments. And, you know, so it, it kind of got even. And then a few people really put their personal um, stories out there. So we, I think we won in the in that, but it was um, Mark is on the line. He started it; it's all his fault. But um, uh, it, it seemed that it got more reasonable in our favor. But we are seeing um, some extreme reactions on either side of this. It's not a neutral sort of thing. It doesn't seem so. I just want everyone to be mm -hmm. careful and cautious and kind <laughs> and even. The um, more communities are doing it, the governor addressed it this afternoon and said, or whatever time he talked today, and, and said he was leaving it up to the locals yeah. to do that based on, you know, their conditions. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's basic public health law. It's not any different than requiring wearing a seatbelt or wearing a helmet or, you know, all the other public health stuff we do. Yep. Okay, so um, the other updates on my um, health director's report is that the face shields that were supposed to be here tomorrow won't be here till Friday. Um, I, the whole delivery system is kind of slowed down. Um, both communities are planning on doing um, home delivery to households, five masks in a bag, one bag per household um, next week. So um, there'll be a insert that um, Jen made, which is fantastic with resources on one side and information about face coverings on the back. Melrose um, has used some of it, but has also translated it into Spanish, Chinese, and something else I can't remember. So we're in the process. I have that, I had it checked. I had the Spanish part checked. Oh, there you go again. Oh, Jen, you're so awesome. She's awesome. That's, wow, the, back. that's, awesome. that's the back part. Um, so actually, all of that is on the Melrose part and translated also with a little, um, yep, with a little thing from the mayor. So the Melrose one doesn't have as many uh, resident resources, but it's in, it's in three or four languages. So we're just waiting on the other languages to get checked. And I had somebody this afternoon check the Spanish part for me. Um, so it's supposed to be nice the end of next week. The weather's supposed to be nice. so. Hopefully both communities will get um, their 50,000 masks out in Wakefield and 60,000 in Melrose. And that'll be all good. The, so Ruth, Ruth, those are being delivered to every household? That's the intent. What about apartments? So the apartment buildings we're going to um, do together like we'll do we we know how many apartments are in each building and so we'll deliver you know x number of bags for that building and that includes um you know obviously also the senior housing mm -hmm. which has already gotten around and they're going to get another round mm -hmm. 
Do you have the phone number? Because I have had several calls from people on how do you get masks? What number do you call? Well, everybody's going to get them next week. So you can just tell them next week they'll be hand delivered to their door for their front door. Which but there is a number if you needed it, correct? If you didn't get them? There is the Melrose Helps line, but mm -hmm. we're not delivering now because we are delivering next week to everybody. I, under I understand that. But if they don't get them next week or the week after, is there a number they can call? They can call the health department. Got it. Well, and, uh, Ruth, I, I said this in my... Um... In my email to you and Paul Broder's April 24th, I think it was, addressed mm -hmm. and say give the website and the phone number. And maybe we should just post that on the Board of Health website so people can find it more easily. The Melrose Helps phone number and website is on the home page of the city's website. Yes. All right. But we can put it on both, but it's it's there. Well, it probably wouldn't be bad to put it on ours, Joe. All right, we can add it to ours. No problem. I looked at it earlier, couldn't see it. Mm. I've gone to the um, COVID-19 information and it's in there. Um, I looked it up earlier, so I know it's there. Okay. But we'll add it to the part two. Jen, I don't know if you know this, but definitely some of the calls that I've been doing for follow-up include Spanish speakers. Um, I don't know that it's prudent to put every language in a bag, but if we're aware, we should, you know, the people who are delivering should at least have a couple of language options in their pocket to make a switch, maybe. Well, they're not Does talking to anybody. They're dropping the bag and going. They're, they're right. not going to be speaking to anybody. Hmm. If, if Melrose has a, um, a translating service, I'd be happy to redesign something. And even if we just have it digitally, um, I've never used, um, in, in this position, I've never used a translation service. So if Melrose has one that they um, are comfortable with, I'd be happy to borrow that. So we're actually, um, <laughs> hopefully tomorrow, I can... Um, get the contract signed where we are contracting with a translation service for the contact tracing and we'll pay for it yep. so that yep. when we have non-english speakers we can give them directly to the um to this um, translating service so um the melrose one just because of time the the medford health department has a spanish-speaking inspector and she checked it today and Malden has a Chinese speaking inspector. So I was gonna ask them tomorrow, although they're Chinese speaking, but I'm not sure if they're Chinese reading. Um, but Malden also has, already has a um, translation service they use. So we're trying to get that done is, you know, immediately, but at the same time, we're also getting the translation service for the nurses. So I, we should, I agree. I think we should have it in other languages so that we have it available. I know that previous food safety information that I've given to the food pantry, we've also given in Spanish. Mm. And the Wakefield's food pantry has said that's the only language they really feel is relevant for them. But yeah, let's use since Wakefield, since Melrose uses so much of Wakefield stuff, we'll <laughs> have Wakefield use some of Melrose's stuff. So yeah. Um, okay, so the $100,000 I, talk to you about that. We should be getting another um, another chunk of money, but I don't know when and I don't know how much. We extended the, um, the 
group of rooms at the four points for isolation and quarantine. We originally paid for eight weeks and we just extended it for another three weeks. Um, and then some of the money has been used for the mass. And at this point, most of the money is being used on salaries that are above and beyond people's regular salaries. And for the school nurses that worked over school vacation week, we're paying them time and a half for the hours they worked over vacation. And they get time and a half if they work more than 40 hours or more than eight hours in a day or if they work on a Saturday or Sunday. So the last, uh, the last couple of weeks we've averaged $2,500 to $3,000 a week in COVID-19 salaries that we're spending out of that $100,000. Um, so and is that financing for the school nurses going in Wakefield, going back to the business department of the school department to figure out, and then they bill us? Is that how? Well, it's we're going? figuring out the logistics. What yeah. I'm trying to get them to do is to get them to pay it, and yeah. we and reimburse them. Yeah. Because Melrose is super strict, and trying to make every one of the Wakefield school nurses an employee of Melrose would be a nightmare. Bad idea. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm working on for the Wakefield nurses. Um, so that's that. Um, the face shields, the Medical Reserve Corps has um, brought us actually 300 face shields, most of which need to be assembled. So um, one group of it got assembled um, and what's today? Wednesday, so I think it must have been Monday those we delivered 81 face shields to the four establishments in melrose so that's fitch osterman's elmhurst and melrose care center along with lab coats that were also donated to us and then the rest of them are in the process of being assembled and then um, laurel has graciously offered to deliver to, I guess now it's just the two nursing homes in Wakefield, but they're both big nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And so she'll deliver, um, you know, probably a good hundred face masks to each of them with the rest of the lab coats. So hopefully we'll be able to do that at the beginning of next week. I'm just waiting for them to get assembled by Melrose volunteers. Um, the FDA grant was submitted on Friday. Yay. Um, it was a little refreshing to be dealing with something other than COVID-19, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. And um, I owe you a letter that was just sent to the housing authorities yesterday um, talking about limiting access to their buildings. And their letter also talked about how local boards of health can make that into an order, which <laughs> some boards of health have already done. Um, Malden did it originally, but they only talked about the housing authorities buildings. Of course, in Melrose, we have Cochrane, Levi Gould, Cephalo, Fuller that are not owned by the housing authority. So it would have to be broader than housing authority. The multifamily building on Broadway for the elderly in Wakefield, is that owned by the housing authority? Uh, Broadway, I don't know. We'll have to call the housing authority. And I'll ask. check, I'll check. It is, all, it is elderly housing, but I'm not. Is it 151 Broadway? Yeah. Yes. That's owned by the housing authority too? Yes. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Um, they, all of the um, housing authorities have already been sent some uh, posters and information about managing multifamily buildings 
including signage and CDC recommendations on cleaning and disinfecting. Sorry, I know I cut myself off again. Um, and guidance information. And tomorrow, all apartment buildings in Wakefield that have eight or more units, which is 22, and apartment buildings in Melrose with, I think it's six or more units, which is 130, is also getting um, a cover letter from me saying, you know, hopefully this is helpful to you. And then with copies, uh, color copies of each of the signs and information and saying if they want it electronically, just let us know and we'll send it electronically. So we've been doing some extra outreach to the multifamilies. Um, I will send you the information that was sent to the Housing Authority and we can talk about it at the next meeting. Um, about whether you want to make that an advisory or an order or whatever. So that's kind of pending. I think that's all I have for my health director's report with the updates from what I had already sent you, but of course everything changes. Well, Ruth, we know, we know everyone, Cindy, like I just wish we could peel some work away and it just keeps. Out. I do. Some of the calls Cindy answers for me. Mm -hmm. Right, Cindy? Yep. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, we still don't have an answer from the state on camps. Mm -hmm. Pools cannot open while the emergency or the public health emergency order is in place. Um, we are getting calls from pools and camps. Western Mass is fairly hysterical over it because they're getting so many calls and so DPH is under a lot of pressure to come out with an advisory sooner rather than later on camps. Yeah, there's one of the camps um, that I'm involved with has been pretty prudent in saying by such and such a date, we will have a decision on which session because they think they're hoping that maybe they can get through the last half of the summer, but even that, and then mm -hmm. Maine has just put out all sorts of interesting plans that are getting pushed back. Um, getting back to whether we write more orders, I can't, you know, it's funny, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know what you all think, that people are either depending on an order and it's not important unless we make it an order. And then when we do make an order, it's sort of how dare you not let us think for ourselves. So we're, there's no winning on this one. Okay. Um, I also got an inquiry about um, the behavior of, of realtor um, open houses and that sort of thing. So right now they have, to, my understanding is that they have to um, limit any open housing, any open houses to, you know, under 10 people and social distancing and all of that. But um, I'm wondering. That is addressed in the governor's advisory. It is. I'm Explicitly. wondering. You know, yeah. And, 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 and I, and I, I responded that we weren't, you know, really going to, go much further than that, but I'm, I'm suggesting back to them that they collaborate as Wakefield Realtors and sort of put their own understanding out there. But, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure, but they did, one member did reach out to me to get an opinion. You don't want to go look at open houses and see how it's going? <laughs> no, it'll make me feel bad about my house, so I'm not going <laughs> to I have received inquiries and that's what I've told everybody is less than 10 people, mass, social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of them are doing it, doing um, virtual tours. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to buy the house, most people want to physically see the house. Yeah. Anything else, anybody? Everybody's feeling well <laughs> so far. All right. Um, 
we have had both both communities have had employees um, diagnosed with COVID-19. So. Are we prepared yet to present numbers on, rec I mean, I know this, the, the state has changed their format, it seems to me, nearly every 10 days on how they report, but they're now reporting cases and then, and then those who are out of quarantine. Are we interested in breaking that down for Wakefield? Some people are asking for it. I, you know, it's not a perfect number. I, I understand people's concerns and they're looking for that information. Everybody comes out of quarantine and isolation unless they pass away. Good point. Yeah. So, we've had over 200 cases. Yeah. Are they looking for how many are currently in isolation and quarantine? That's going to be more work yeah, for you and, and Karen. Yeah. So, you know, the, the logical information is everybody comes out of isolation and quarantine unless Unless they don't. Yeah. yeah. There's only two options here. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. You're right. I don't know why I had to think out loud there, but yeah. no, no, no. No, it's not. You're not the only one who asked that question. So I've, I've, I've given that answer because um, I've talked to another health department that does that, and I'm like, what is? Why are you doing this? And they're like, well. The mayor wants it, but it really doesn't mean anything. Okay. But, okay, well. <laughs> We're gonna do that then. Good to know, good to know. We don't need to do the math. Ruth, do we have numbers for not like as of today? Yes, we do. Hold on. Um, let me just look it up. Can I see the chat box in Zoom? No, I cannot, Frank. Laurel, can you see a chat box? Yeah, there's no. Nobody's chatting. Do you think someone's chatting, Frank? Yes, I, do that. I, I was chatting with Ruth. <laughs> oh, so it's private, so I'm not gonna- I'll just ask everyone. Uh, <laughs> I think we have some members of the public here. Um, should we, do we need to offer some sort of public comment session if they're interested? Sure, I'm seeing one. I don't know who the other numbers are, so. Um, well, the ones that were written comments, Laurel, read at the beginning and i think she answered their questions and yes we can ask people if they want to speak I let me see. just answer the last question which is today's numbers is melrose 161 and wakefield 212. thank you and before somebody asks me this question about how can a number go down from one day to the next um it's sometimes we have, well, not sometimes, many times, we're given cases and when the nurse calls on the case, it turns out they don't really live there, like they used to live there, their parents live there, whatever. Um, and so they come off our list and we give them to the appropriate health department. So I think there was one day. That happened to me today. Yeah. So. It, Sometimes there's at least one community in one of the days where the numbers went down and that's why. Yeah. So our numbers are more accurate than the ones on the state website, but you know, it gives you a, a ballpark. Mm. Oh, sorry. Frank, we have no comments. The, the one person who's here is just watching. He just. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that is. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wow. Hold no, on. Hold on. Ryan. Oh, they, okay. Like to talk outside the meeting. About the, would, have, would appreciate contact information. Um, uh, sorry, I, yeah, I, I, I can, sorry, I can just talk. Yeah, I, I'd appreciate it <laughs> if uh, I can get some way of contacting the Melrose, the, the Melrose uh, members here, um, possibly tomorrow or later in the week. Um, yeah, just, if you email me, why don't you email me, R. Clay? at cityofmelrose.org and then I'll email you their contact. Do you guys, do you want, well, there's only two of you, do you want to give phone number or email? Who do you want me to give them? Email. Best way to reach you. Probably yeah. email. Email probably. Yeah. 
because Frank is out of, you know, is working full time and all that. So, all right, I will, um, Ryan, just shoot me an email and I will give you um, both of their email addresses. It's definitely okay. the easiest way to communicate. Okay. Great, thank you. Yep. I can just put it in the chat box here and then Ryan would have it and everyone else. That works too. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ruth? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't I don't remember them off the top of my head. Wakefield is easy because it's all wakefield.ma.us. Frank can do it. Oh, all well done. Frank just did it. Got to get you up to speed on Zoom, Ruth, after this. Yeah, but how, Maureen, do you know how to do it? No. What, give you my email now? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Frank I'm lucky I can it. get into this. Frank, just forward it to Maureen, I'm thinking, when the time comes, when you get it. Frank, that? do you have my email? I yeah. do, I have to look it up. Just send yeah, it. Just send it. All right. Okay, no problem. We're doing better and better. Each We're getting there. It's a learning process. <laughs> what? And telling us the meeting's over. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. Sorry. Okay. I don't even I don't even hear it. Yeah, that's oh, it. there it is. Thank you. Okay. Ryan, do you see both of them? I do. Thank you very much. Ha. Yay. Okay. There you go. Nice work. <laughs> As I said, it's a learning process. Um, and you made a comment I'll offer. I guess this is especially of interest to the Melrose group. I thought she was going to join us tonight, but we have a third member, Carol Ann Lasitra, who is just waiting to be approved. Oh, good. Maybe that's going to happen. Yeah. Right. It was on the um, it was on the city council's agenda, so it has to go to committee, and then it will go back to the city council at whatever the date is of their next meeting, and hopefully be approved. And then you just has to come down and get sworn in. Yeah. Now, how long will all that take, roughly? Are we talking days, weeks? Two um, more? I believe that the council meets the first and third Monday of the month, which would be May 4th. Yeah. Which would be this coming Monday, right? Yeah, I'll check with Amy Camosa to see if I don't get notified of the committee meetings. I only get notified of the full meetings. I'll check with Amy to see if the committee is meeting before May 4th. And if it does, then she'll be approved May 4th. Which will be great. Awesome. That'll be great, good. I'll send, um, if, so she could she, ask. I'm sorry, but assuming she's approved, I'll send you her um, resume. So she actually could be at our meeting next week. Yep. We invited her, Frank invited her to, yeah. you know, sit in and sit in. <laughs> be here remotely tonight, but clearly that didn't work for her. And hopefully she's available on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock. We look forward to it. Yeah. Cool. Her background is in behavioral health. So it's a good compliment. Mm. Awesome. Anything else? Yes. Just keep up the good work and stay healthy. Ooh. And thanks everybody for everything that you're doing. It's hugely appreciated. And Jen, thank you so much for all the hard work you did on those posters. And oh, absolutely. Whatever um, you need, just let me know and I'll try to get it done for you. Yeah, Jen's yeah. been just wonderful. It's it's such a great resource to have. And I consider, since we're a joint health department, I consider it perfectly legitimate. Oh, yeah. To yeah. steal anything Wakefield does for Melrose. The whole idea was like, you know, not to be, re not to waste time and be more yep. efficient. Yep. Um, it works really well. So I just wanted to recoup. So like, it just, it feels like we're still rolling this order out. 
Jen is working on that. We'll have more messaging going out when we actually get to deliver the mask. Um, it sounds like we're nearly there. Yep, I can, um, I will send the uh, Melrose version to the Melrose board members, which has mostly the same info, but in, as I said, in different languages and you saw it tonight, but we can also email you, you know, the Wakefield language also. Ben, are you involved in any WCAT PSAs or just YouTube PSAs? Um, I haven't worked with them since this whole thing started, really. We, we have done a ton together. I'm, I'm familiar with that whole crew. They're, they're really awesome. Um, but I haven't worked on any of these current ones with them. So once we Catherine is doing that, though. Catherine yeah. is working with the kids in WCAT on some PSAs. Yeah, but their PSAs, I mean, I, I was just at the, you know, we did have a good wake up meeting. Um, but I feel like those are much more about mental health for kids. I'm wondering, um, and I can certainly give you a, a call tomorrow, Jen. Um, I'm just wondering if we need to maybe just amplify the face covering and clarify the do's and don'ts, blah, blah, blah. I, did I think PSAs. that's a good idea. Yeah, I did get some state PSAs. Um, some of them I liked and some of them I didn't like. So let's look at those again, because that's why the state makes them is so that they can be used. Right. Um, and the other thing is the um, one of the Melrose school nurses participated in dealing with adolescents in quarantine, you know, in stay at home that the Stoneham school department put on. So it was $500, but I think that's perfectly appropriate money appropriate to use the COVID-19 money on. So I asked her to send me the contact information and I'm gonna, I, I'm definitely, will definitely offer it in Melrose and I'm, because I'm cheap, I'm gonna try to do it together with the Wakefield nurses and the Melrose nurses together. But if necessary, we'll pay for it twice for both sets of nurses. Okay. Cause it, it, it's a great, it's a great idea. And all of those nurses have available to them the Northeastern School yes. of Nursing, School Nursing Consortium, and I'm, I'm guessing they're involved, and those are not very expensive. Uh, most of them are free, and they are doing them. Good. Yeah. Yep, they're definitely doing that. They're also doing um, check-ins with some of their students, you know, and their families, just a how's it going kind of check-in thing for some of their kids at risk. And I know the Melrose Food Program is looking to expand from just cold food pickups to also having some hot food pickups. Okay. Nobody has anything else? Do it all again next week? Yeah, same time. Candace, anything we should know about how things are going in East Boston? Because you're kind of our bellwether. Oh, um, it's kind of, I mean, it's busy. We're having a tough time uh, deciding when folks can kind of come off quarantine. Um, we have a lot of employers that are looking for us to kind of give clearance to go back to work. And there's not a lot of good guidance on when that is and do we need to retest? And mm -hmm. we probably shouldn't be retesting. We yeah, have a lot of folks. There's some new guidance on that, Candace, that I will send to you. There, okay. the CDC on their Monday call was saying how it was getting so confusing between you know, people who were sick, people who weren't sick, quarantine versus isolation, and they're just kind of putting it all together into um, 10 days instead of summer seven, summer 14. So I will, um, I'll get that to you. That would be great, thank you. Is that on the CDC website? Um, I presume it is. 
but we have to do what the state health department says. Yeah. So what's tomorrow's Thursday. Oh, tomorrow's the only day of the week that I don't talk to the state. Um, but I'll talk to them again on Friday and I'll, I'll bring them up, bring that up and ask if they're putting that out too. Okay. We may have that update too on the MAVEN classes. They talked about that yesterday. That well, they did? The was coming from the CDC and to be aware of it. So I have a funny feeling that Friday's class is going to do it. Ah, okay. So they'll probably, the Friday conference call is with all health departments. So, and yours is, yours is after ours, I believe. Yours is at 11. 11 to 1230, yeah. Yeah, and ours is at 9. So they'll probably tell us at 9 and then tell you at 11. I can't wait. Because ADC told us on Monday. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they told us yesterday. This is coming. Oh, so much information to keep track of. Yep. We all need, like, an exterior hard drive. So. I do. I, I'd like a pensive, like in Harry Potter, where I can just oh, I know. download a chunk of my brain and then retrieve it when I need it. Yep, yep, yep. That was genius on her part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, same time, same bat station, same bat time. Elaine, can you make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting for the Wakefield Board of Health. 8, 10, p.m. I'll second. All in favor? Laurel is in favor. Candace is? In favor. Elaine is? In favor. Okay, that's all. Motion to um, adjourn the Melrose Board of Health meeting. Seconded. All in favor? Yeah. Says yeah. Yes. Maureen says yes. There you go. All right. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good time. Good okay. night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Stay healthy. Yep.